the Daisy Switch and you can call me Daisy. So today I thought we'd make some cinnamon rolls with a little twist, they're not cinnamon, they're chamomile and lavender. Those rolls will be vegan. Yep, they will. And uh, let's get started. Alright. So we're gonna start with the dough, for which we need a mixing spoon and a mixing bowl. We need flour, salt, coconut sugar, or any sugar you have on hand, baking yeast, coconut milk, measuring cup, coconut oil, and this thing. to make those rolls for protection and for a little bit of anxiety release you know like just a lid boost but it's mostly just for protection like against evil and ill intended so we're gonna start with the flour our branding ingredients ingredient and we're gonna take 450 gram of it it's just plain all-purpose flour so as I stated in my previous video about bread, flour is good for grounding because it's the base of any baking, but also for wealth, abundance and prosperity as it is made with wheat, which is associated with the spoon. So we have our 450 grams of flour. We are going to add a pinch of salt. We don't need more than a pinch, it's just to balance out the, sh the sugar. Salt is good for cleansing, purifying, and protecting. And today we'll use it for protection. Again, against ill intended it it will. Okay. Now we'll get a bag of yeast to let it rise. of coconut sugar. You can use more if you want, but coconut sugar is quite uh, strong. If you use regular uh, caster sugar, I'd recommend to use more, like more about 100 grams, depending on how sweet you want your rolls to be. Okay, so 40. is good for protection and also for all things like abundance, wealth, prosperity and like like I said he will use it mostly for protection we could use a bit of prosperity right now but this is not our focus okay put this aside we're gonna quickly mix all the dry goods so that they are evenly uh, distributed. While doing this, you can already put your intention into it, tell your ingredients what you want them to do. So the flour will ground and be the base for my spell. The salt will give this little boost of protection as it's just a, a pinch and the sugar will make the big boost of protection like basically for the for the dough it's the coconut that will bring it all together oops okay you make a little well or hole in the middle like 
like so, if you can see. And we're gonna pour our milk and our flour inside. So we want 180 grams, uh, millimeters, not grams, of coconut milk or any milk of your choosing. Again, I use coconut for the, the protection that it would bring. We start mixing. I should probably have added it like slowly, but meh, it's done. Again, as you start mixing it and kneading it, Put your intention into it. I'm gonna add the oil and then leave that aside. Now I know what you're thinking. You're probably telling yourself that this is gonna be so heavy on coconut. Yes. Except that the coconut oil I'm using is actually dehydrated or neutralized. So it doesn't actually have a taste or um, a smell. Like it carries the, pro the properties of the coconut without carrying all the, well, the taste. But some people don't like that. I do, but some people don't. Okay, I'm gonna continue kneading it by hand. Make sure you have clean hands and that of course all your surroundings and everything you'll be using is clean too. If you're using um, regular sugar, your dough shouldn't be as brown as mine is gonna be. I don't know if you can already see. The color from this one is because of the coconut sugar that is quite brown and strong. What it should look like, you see, when I squish it, it holds together, and when I fold it, you know, it re re reunites. So, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flour back our bowl and we're gonna let the, the dough sit for about an hour. And while we let the dough sit, we're gonna make the milk, or rather than the milk, we're gonna make the glaze. But for that, we'll use milk. Anyways. Okay, so now we're gonna do the icing, or glazing, or filling whatever you want to call it. So we're going to use 200 millimeters of coconut milk. We're going to bring it to a boil. about hot enough now giving a lot of steam so I'm gonna take it away from the fire or from the heat and we're gonna separate it into two batches if possible of equal size we're gonna set this aside we don't need it anymore and we're gonna add the 
chamomile into one bowl and let it infuse and the lavender into another one I didn't use a lot of lavender because it's already pretty strong and we're gonna let this sit for about um, 8 to 10 minutes okay so we've let it sit for about 10 minutes now we're gonna strain it to do that we're gonna use two other bowls and a cotton cloth you can use whatever you have um, I wouldn't rec recommend using uh, coffee filters just because they're not meant for such heavy liquids, I guess and they're meant to let the water drip slowly and you don't want to lose like an hour or so just filtering your your milk so we're gonna press leftovers to make sure all the milk is strained we're gonna set it aside in your space okay and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the icing sugar little by little to each and I'm gonna add a little bit of food coloring to the lavender one one drop just because I, I want it to look more purple you know If you want to use color association or color magic, note that purple is actually good for psychic related things. And for example, it's good for protect protecting against psychic attacks, which might be what I'm trying to protect myself from right now nose okay. have a bit of blue here okay so gonna add a spoon of each and I'm gonna you know blend them together um, alternatively does that make sense Or maybe I'll just start with that one. I don't know. Anyways, so what well, those herbs are known and used for, and what I use them for. Chamomile is used for peace, relaxation, healing, success, money, and love as the primary uh, properties you can find about it. Today I'm gonna use it for. Um, peace, in a way, peace and healing. You know, it's like, how can I say that? If I want to protect, I just want things to stay slow and smooth and peaceful. So that's how I'm using it. Kill them, with kind, kill them with kindness um, kind of mantra, you know? You just stay positive and stay zen. <laughs> Lavender is known for peace, cleansing, relaxation, purification, healing and love. And we're gonna use it uh, with P 
piece I'm here too as a complementary complementary from the the chamomile but we most like how do you say that most importantly gonna use it for the cleansing and purification properties to keep all bad energies at bay like this will keep things nice and smooth I'm not sure it makes sense but it does for me anyways I'm using both of those um, on those hairs to protect against negativity and against ill-intended energies. So I mix clockwise. I think that's a word. And as I do that, I bring my intention in to attract protection, peace, and healing. I'm not really focused on the healing part, but mostly the protection and peace. And once I'm gonna have everything incorporated, I will um, stir counterclockwise to banish negativity and uh, ill-intended energies, or just ill-intentions, if that makes sense. But for now, I'm just bringing in peace and purity. This is mostly quiet, but some people prefer to actually put words into what they're doing. Some like to chant, some like to just have mantras that they repeat. It's really up to you. Up to your, your preferences, really, because your path is your own. Okay, now I'm gonna. Um, Stir counterclockwise to banish negativity and ill intentions. And we're done. We're gonna let it sit and thicken. And while we do that, we're gonna go back to the door. Okay, so we're gonna get back to the door that we let sit for probably about an hour, mostly about the time we we required for the um, glaze. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the door, knead it a little bit. that it should have risen up but it's okay if it didn't rise too much okay smooth so what we're gonna do now is set this aside because we don't need it anymore and we are gonna take grill from the oven and preheat the oven at 180 degrees celsius which you think that I'm gonna do now Just our countertop. 
Because we're going to roll our dough. So I use a clean bottle that is round, it helps. We are gonna roll it into a rectangle shape. It might take some time, but it's okay. It's gonna take a lot of time, but it's okay. Once I'm done rolling it, so we got a um, soda rectangle. It should be like one long strip, but it's quite hard to do. So I find making a big rectangle instead is easier, and it works just as fine. So we're gonna take our glaze, which should be pretty thick. If your glaze isn't thick, you can always add some you can always add some um, icing sugar until it's reached the, <coughs> the good consistency which should be something like that see it's, it's thick but it's kind of staying on the spoon okay We're gonna put a baking sheet on the grill. Mm. <coughs> okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make equal strips or as equal as strips we can. About the um, the width you want your rolls to be. So I guess I'm gonna make mine about like three fingers. Yep. Okay. Don't get yourself. It should be pretty easy to cut through. It's not a very, a very sticky dough. It's pretty, pretty nice and smooth. I need even more. I'm gonna eyeball it. I'm gonna cut it here, so this one will be a bit smaller. We'll have a baby one. Okay. We're gonna separate them only a bit. So, what we could do now is that we could continue rolling them until we have the long strips. But I think the thickness is about right right now. There's a hair in there. Sorry about that. Yeah, I like how thick they are currently, so I'm gonna go with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay a bit of glaze I'm using, I'm using the lavender and now I'm adding the chamomile because we're using them together I'm going to add a little bit more actually you can make either like just chamomile and just lavender rolls or you can mix them or you can even like you know mix your lavender and your chamomile directly in the pan together it's really up to you you don't have to do that with lavender or chamomile okay now we're gonna roll it and as we roll it a bit of the glaze is gonna come out, but it's fine. Up, and we place it on top. Okay, I'm gonna let the, um, the rest of the 
do take up the, the, the glaze that's on the countertop because we're gonna stick them all together I'm pretty sure I'll have a lot left over so I might do something else with it I mean we're gonna cover it anyways but I don't know what's here we'll have fun them together because they are gonna they're gonna rise uh, not rise like um yes rise yeah that's what they're gonna do. they're gonna rise and so as they rise they'll get thicker and when they get thicker they're gonna meet actually so you want to let them meet by themselves This is probably not the best way to do it and my glaze is probably not thick enough and I probably have too much of it but it's also nice to have fun with the liquids okay that's a weird thing to say but it's still fun to bake and have fun with what you're baking yeah sure it's fun to have fun anyways As you roll your rolls, you can imagine your spell, this here, your protection spell, as being sealed. So like, when I roll, my spell and my intention are getting sealed in, and when I finish rolling, it's like, it's locked, if it makes sense. Like you can't undo the spell. Shoop, shoop. I do try to uh, extend them a little bit, just to have a bit more of them. This recipe, I usually have more rolls, but I actually usually make them less um, wide and maybe less thick too. I'm not sure about that though. But I still have a pretty good amount. Okay, the baby one. You're gonna take a bit less. of glaze left over so what I would actually advise is to reduce the icing by maybe 50 grams and to actually use like half of the milk so instead of using 200 millimeter use 100 well I tried to use the same measurements for each of them but none of them are actually the same age, except maybe those two. But it's fine. Okay, so we're gonna bring this. Try not to get it in the syrup. And we're gonna get a bit more in them. When you do that, you can draw a sigil if you have one. Or you can just leave them be. is left to do is wait for the oven to be at temperature which is 180 degrees celsius bake those for 20 to 30 minutes until they're baked obviously and then you can let it sit once it's baked you take it out you let it sit and when it's just warm you can eat them you can also add the leftover of, uh, of your glazing. You can add it as you eat. 
your bowls and you just enjoy. It's baked. So it looks a bit dry like that because as the icing is mostly sugar, like it's just milk and sugar, it kind of caramelized. So what we're going to do to counterpart this little bit of dryness is add more filling. We just glaze it over. And this is kind of, you know, like the final part. Point. Whatever. You know, it's like this final pinch when you add anything to anything. It's like the final seal to your spelling and intention. And now all that's left to do is enjoy. Alright. Thank you for watching. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you want to. And I'll see you later. Pew, pew.